Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate at St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. Today's Do You Know question is, do you know the three epiphanies of Jesus linked to January the 6th? Every January the 6th, we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Um, this is, epiphany means manifestation, a revelation of Jesus to the wider world. In the West, January the 6th was always associated with the epiphany of the Magi, the, uh, associated with the Magis, uh, whereas in the East, uh, the uh, January the 6th was always associated with two other events as epiphanies, and that is the baptism of Jesus and the wedding feast of Cana the first sign of Jesus according to John's Gospel. Um, this video is an attempt to kind of unpack the three, these three events in the life of Jesus, showing how they were manifestations or epiphanies of Jesus to the wider world. Beginning with the Magi, the Magi story and the star that they were following is unique to Matthew's Gospel. They, um, the manifestation of the, the star uh, for the Magis was an indication. They were, they were astrologers who studied the stars uh, as indicators of world events. And a bright, large star was always an indicator of, of a royal birth, uh, a royal birth that would be different from the other royals that were in the world at the time. Uh, it would be the royal birth of a king who showed, was going to make significant difference to humanity by showing uh, care and concern for others and uh, ruling with justice. Uh, and so the Magi's go on a journey seeking this particular kind of king, bringing him gifts to honor him and to welcome him to the world with the hope of profoundly change in the world with justice and care and concern for others. Um, now the Gentiles, are, uh, the uh, Magi's are Gentiles and Matthew pictures them as so uh, and they are the ones who uh, Jesus manifests himself to and the message that Matthew is trying to communicate to us is that Jesus came for all. Uh, and Jew and Gentile, and s Gentiles accepted him and some Jews rejected him. The message is for us today is that all, Jesus came for all, and we as disciples are always to look for leaders who are going to show care and concern and live and act out of justice. The second story associated with the epiphany is the story of Jesus' baptism. Now, Jesus' baptism shows up in three of the four Gospels, does not exist in John's Gospel. And the John's, uh, John the Baptist's uh, baptism was a symbolic indication of a person turning their life to God, handing their life over to God. Now, Jesus didn't have to do this kind of handing over his life to God because he was already, already linked to God in a special way. However, because he was fully human, what he wanted to do is model for us uh, uh, what a disciple should be about, namely a continual process of conversion, turning one's life to God. And baptism was a symbolic indication of that. Um, in the events in the gospel, you have God uh, from a cloud speaking uh, at Jesus' baptism, affirming his action, and actually inviting all of us to listen and imitate the action that Jesus uh, did in and through his baptism. Therefore, as disciples, we are called to turn our lives continually to God in a continual process of conversion another key manifestation in the life of Jesus. And finally, the third manifestation associated with the Epiphany is the wedding feast of Cana. This is unique to John's Gospel, and it's the first sign, according to John's Gospel, it's the first sign that Jesus performed in his public ministry. Even though he was not ready, uh, his hour had not yet come, coaxed by his mother, he is willing to show care and concern for this wedding uh, and this wedding couple who, during their wedding feast, they run out of wine. 
Uh, so even though he's not ready, he's willing to show care and concern, and he does marvelous event in manifesting this care and concern by turning uh, water into wine, an abundant amount of water into wine. People estimate that it's probably around 160 gallons, and not only just abundance, but also at the highest quality, according to the wine steward, who claimed that this is the best wine that's been served so far. And so another clear manifestation of Jesus' uh, epiphany to the world, uh, uh, the beginning signs of his public ministry, according to John, and a lesson for us as disciples. And that lesson is that uh, as disciples, we too are to show care and concern for others, even at times when we don't feel like it or we might not be ready for it. And, and so it's a clear manifestation of what discipleship is all about. And so these three events have traditionally been associated with January the 6th as epiphany events in the life of Jesus, manifesting uh, what, not only what Jesus was about, but we as disciples, what we are to be about. As with the Magi's searching for leaders who, who rule with justice and care and concern, with the um, baptism, uh, committing ourselves in and through our own baptism to continual conversion and, and uh, turning of our lives over to God, and with the wedding feast of Canaan, always being ready uh, to show care and concern for others, especially those in need, even when we might not feel like it or might not be ready for it. So I hope this has helped to explain these three events as they are linked with January the 6th, and I hope you will return again to more Do You Know series questions as we continue to explore our faith and to know more about our traditions. Thank you very much.